Living in a World with COVID by Natalie and James. Hi, my name is Natalie and on the right is my friend James. We're both seniors at Division Avenue High School in Levittown, New York. We're just your two typical teenagers. We love going out and hanging out with friends, going to get food, and maybe a little bit of karaoke. On March 13th, 2020, our lives changed. On this day, we got our first case of COVID in Levittown, New York. We were told that COVID was equal to the flu and we had nothing to worry about, but we were wrong. The three days of school closing turned into a long quarantine and lockdown where none of us could see each other. Although we found similarities between the flu and COVID, it was made distinct that they were very different. COVID is a new virus strain that is spreading from person to person. Anyone can get it, anyone can spread it, and everyone can help stop it. When COVID started, there is a law put into place that you must wear a face covering in public areas. However, a lot of people decide not to and either wear it wrong or not wear it at all. I think a peanut butter cookie, please. Ma'am, I told you yesterday, you need to wear a mask and we don't allow pets. I talked to my lawyer and to my psychic and to my dog's life coach, and there is zero law in the constitution or in the universe that says I have to wear a mask. In our store, you have to wear a mask. I would like to speak with the manager. I'm the owner. Well, I would like to speak to the manager. Not wearing a mask will make you more vulnerable to the virus. But what should you do if you have the virus? If you have been correctly diagnosed, you should isolate yourself if you're sick. You should separate your, yourself from others in the household until you have at least seven days passed since your symptoms first appeared, you've been fever-free for 72 hours without the use of medication, and other symptoms have improved such as coughing or shortness of breath. If you've been exposed, you should self-quarantine. This is meant to separate and restrict movement of potential carriers. You should stay home for two weeks to stop the spread of the contagious disease. Another change since COVID began is that our parents and my siblings started picking up more shifts at the hospital. Since they work in the hospital, they are one of the first people eligible for the vaccine. Now some time for some family questions. So what is your name, age, relationship, and occupation? Frank Kanko, registered nurse, 51 years old. Right. So my relationship to you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. My name is Brianna. I'm 24. I'm Natalie Chua's older sister, and I am an occupational therapist. Cool. How, How has COVID-19 affected your life? So I graduated college in May 2019. Um. I started working in this facility that I'm working in now in January 2020 and COVID really started becoming apparent in about March 2020. So, you know, besides obviously my social life changing, I wasn't going out to dinner or lunch with my friends. I wasn't um, going to indoor facilities besides the very basic things like I was going into work and I was wearing layers of PPE that I've never really worn layers of PPE that my co-workers didn't typically wear you know five days a week and it, it became a very you know e exhausting point because all of a sudden it was like a week and then all of a sudden a week turned into a month and you know it, it became very hard because things that were becoming normalized in the workplace aren't weren't really supposed to be considered, I guess, normal. Okay, that's my life because I'm a registered nurse that took care of a lot of COVID patients last year. I saw a lot of people die. And it's really hard to deal with. Never experienced like that. <clears throat> On my 27 years as a nurse, I never saw it like that. All right. Uh, have you personally experienced COVID or someone you know? How did it affect you? I got sick last year after taking care of a patient. So mainly the person that comes to my mind was my mom had gotten COVID, we believe from work. It was before they were talking about 
proper PPE and it was like, it wasn't widely available. And I just remember for like a week, she was really quiet at the table and didn't say anything. And one day she was just like, yeah, I have COVID. And then I didn't really, you know, she quarantined in the home in her own room and was like I didn't see her for like two to three weeks maybe through a doorway through over the phone I would call her um and a lot of the patients that I'd worked with uh were COVID positive patients so you know I, I and to this day I still do see COVID positive patients it, it's a pretty regularized thing in my life I see it every day I did take the vaccine. I got the uh, Pfizer BioNTech. Uh, yes, I got the Pfizer vaccine. All right. Between the two vaccine choices, which were, why did you take Pfizer vaccine? Um, that's what's only available in our hospital. Yeah. That was the one that my facility offered me with uh, the nursing homes and everything. Governor Cuomo basically made it very easy for healthcare workers and people who worked in nursing homes to get the vaccine, which I'm very happy about. Did you feel any side effects? So I got the first dosage and I had like this huge rush of adrenaline. I was there with my co-workers. I was so excited to get it. And then, you know, two or three weeks, I think three weeks go by and I get the second one. So first one, no really side effects. The second one, I woke up the next morning and I felt like I did a really hard workout at the gym. Like my lower back was just aching, my upper back too a little bit, just felt really tight. It probably took like two or three days um, for it to subside. In fact, for my first dose, I got a full like symptoms for like three days. I have body aches, very sore on the injection side on my arm. I for three days is better. And my second dose, I have no side effect. Uh, would you recommend the vaccine to other people that are unsure about it? Yes. All right. Uh, any reason why you would recommend it? Is to be safe against the COVID, to protect yourself and your family, and to have an end to this pandemic. All right. Thanks. And do you have a statement to the people who are unsure if they want to get the vaccine or not? <laughs> I'd say read up on it. I would say read up on it. I would ask and look for scientific based articles, which I know is not everyone's go to. The first thing that they would look to, they often look to um, news sources like first thing that comes to mind is like Fox News or like CNN. And I would really strongly recommend reading scientific articles about it instead of listening to biased news stations. I'd like to keep going. <laughs> and we'll end there. No, I would like to keep going. Bye, Miss Wheeler. <laughs>